Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Grad Chat Leadership Webinar. This is Rachna Mudagauni here. I'm the CEO at the Graduate Students Association from the University of Melbourne. And we're delighted to start off our winter morning. I think it's the 1st of June, which is the official winter start date. And yes, we find ourselves in a socially isolated mode again, but I think with less restrictions, there is a lot of hope for us as we move on to the next few months. So before we commence, and we've got two members of our panel today, we've got Tavita Lisuma, who is our general manager for student engagement. And we, we have Vibol Hai, who is our GSA project officer and volunteer management um, support officer who's joining us today. So I'm delighted to have two of our staff participating in the um, panel discussion. So before I commence, I'd like to acknowledge and pay my respect to the traditional custodians of our, the land from where I am actually broadcasting. It's the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation and acknowledge the past, present, and future leaders' contribution to our community and pay my respect to the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders. So I hope all of you have had a good weekend and a warm welcome to our attendees. I hope um, you, know, you have um, some interesting insight into GSA's strategies for transition to work. So before I bring the panel members on, I just thought it's important to ask ourselves, why does GSA run these activities? You know, it's important to ask our question is that, okay, is it just because, you know, they are not on the campus and they just have to run a webinar, so they run a webinar. Uh, but all our webinars are very closely aligned to our strategic plan. So um, we have been very, very fortunate at GSA at the commencement of this uh, term of our council members who will be, um, actually we have an AGM coming up on the 5th of June, which is very exciting because it's actually a day where we celebrate the achievement of the council and the staff and the membership to talk about what we've achieved in 2019 and 2020. So a welcome to everyone who'd like to join us. And we also have a proposed constitution that has been put forward by our council members for you to vote on. So coming back to our strategic plan, the strategic plan was set by a lot of hard work and consultation by these council members and the previous past council members, talking to the membership, talking to our graduates, talking to the staff, and the plan is actually for five years. It's about a way to move forward, how we move forward, thinking of our goals and objectives. And apart from having a very inclusive, collaborative community for the graduates to support you to the university life, we have five distinct objectives. One is to ensure that GSA undertakes good representation and policy work to ensure that we're supporting our graduates at the University of Melbourne on issues that impact you as a graduate who is studying at the university and undertaking all your other responsibility in your family and community. Our second objective is to ensure that we provide academic support and excellence to ensure that you, know, you are offered the opportunity to achieve your goals and objectives in the academic pursuit at University of Melbourne. The third aspect is about transition to work. So when you are a graduate at the university and particularly in your postgraduate education, you are really focused about what's the next job for me, whether you're working, what's the next career move, or if you're not working, when will I be able to get a full-fledged paid employment in the field that I have specialized? And today we're going to talk about that. And 
The fourth objective is to ensure we run activities, programs that support emotional health and well being, your physical health, your emotional health. And it's delightful that even in the last 12 weeks, our staff and our council members, along with the support of our community, have been, you know, delivering fantastic webinar social events. And of course, for any of this to be working properly and for these four objectives to be working e efficiently for the graduates, we need to have an organization that is sustainable. And sustainability comes from a strong leadership. It comes from clear accountability, being able to ensure that we manage our finances and risk efficient, efficiently and be able to articulate what we're doing. So that's what we do in organizational sustainability. So I request people who are watching this program, GSA has an exciting five years coming ahead, and it is really important that you participate in providing feedback to shape the goals and future of the organization, because the organization is to, you know, it has been created to be the heart and life of graduates at the University of Melbourne. So welcome on board, Tavita and Vibol. It's you know fantastic to have you on board. And today I'd like to um, initially invite Tavita, who has been in the journey at GSA, to implement the LEAD program. It's a very popular program. It was initiated in 2018, and I'd like to acknowledge the work of the previous CEO, Andrew Cameron, in this area and the staff who were involved with the other facilitators. So we've been able to train about, uh, get about 100 people through this program in the last two years. However, it's time for us to stop, pause and evaluate what LEAD is about. And we feel that the reach has been effective, but the cost has been quite enormous. And this council has been very clear in evaluating cost effectiveness. So this year we propose to really run the program efficiently, financially, effectively, and ensure the reach is for people who have actually had never had an opportunity to explore their leadership. So it's not about a program that is, if you already had a leadership opportunity, it's not to bring in a leader and say, let's polish your leadership skills, which we have other programs for. It's about looking at cultural barriers. It's about looking at language barriers. It's looking at the influence of um, your, you know, your family's situation, your social situation that has prevented you from exploring the leader in all of us because as leaders, that's what every individual who survives in our community has a leader, and it's about exploring that leadership in you. It's also giving a message to the organization about what leadership is about. Leadership is not about, you know, me, myself, and I. It's about actually providing an environment to support people to lead. It's to lead from uh, taking your colleagues along. So welcome on board, Tavita. It's wonderful to have you on board. And I hear you have some slides. So let's get your slides up on board and um, tell us a little bit about your journey, particularly facilitating the LEAD program. Yes, yeah, thanks, Rashna, and thank you to everyone on the, on the call today. Um, yeah, I'm very excited and pleased to, to be able to share um, uh, what we, uh, our, our program of LEAD that we've put together for, for this year. Um, we are extremely um, excited to be able to offer this to our postgraduate students um, at the University of Melbourne for the third year running. And as Russia said, um, we, it is designed to, to, to facilitate leadership for those who haven't had the opportunity to, to lead. And so look, so I'll, I'll start off here to, to, to say that LEAD for us uh, is an acronym. Uh, so it, it stands for Leadership, Exploration and Development. And so, um, as Rashna mentioned, 2018, it, it, it was an inception. And we've had a few versions of it over the years. And this year is no different. We're going to we're slightly change it to, to meet the needs of the students and also um, the, the, the budgets that we have to run this program, which is funded by the university. 
So Lee, so the program um, essentially aims to help you build your confidence uh, in your own unique leadership style, uh, understand your strengths, weakness, and learn how to articulate your value professionally and interpersonally, channel your existing passion, purpose, and the commitment to the next steps forward for your goals, and develop your leadership and management skills, understanding how to apply them as a student in your career, uh, and even for the benefit of your community. So for us, the, the program is well-rounded. Um, it, it does talk to definitions of leadership. And I think Rasha talked about it briefly before, is that um, absolutely um, the, the, the way we define leadership is about its values and, the, and how you drive it from your values. And, you know, there's all those talks about the leader is always the loudest or uh, is the overachiever or tends to, you know, even sometimes be taller, which is not the case at all. I mean, um, leader leadership is about uh, the way you understand the people you're with or need to support or um, take, through, um, take through a process. And for us, we're trying to share our, our definition of leadership with the new intake. Um, and uh, we're looking for extreme diversity because uh, the, the actual program thrives on having so many people from so many different walks of life and, and different views that it enhances everybody else's um, learning. So yeah, so for, for us, um, looking really uh, extremely excited about the next, the next intake of LEAD for 2020. Um, and it will slightly be different because of the, the restrictions on COVID-19, but still um, the outputs and the experience uh, will, will be um, enhanced in the way we deliver. That's so interesting, Tavita, because you know, as we have experienced social isolation and when you read uh, you know, the media and you read all the stories of survivors and the heroes, I feel ordinary people have come up in their extraordinary skills to be of support to their community, to their family, to, um, to organizations. And for, my, for me itself in the organization, what I have found working with the 15 council members is each of them, you know, contribute in a different way. And being patient and listening to each one of them and to build on their views and get it from a perspective has been of immense value for me as a CEO because I think um, I feel the leadership program, the first important quality for any leader is to have a sense of appreciation of what everyone can bring to the table. And I think um, I definitely notice the leaders who have demonstrated the excellence in the council have been people who have been empathetic, who've been compassionate, and who actually put their needs um, below other people's needs. And I think that is an amazing skill and quality, which I think is very valuable. Thank you, Tavita. Let's move on to hear yeah. more about the program. Thanks, thanks. And um, so also part of, part of this, the other stuff that you will get out of the program, um, bear with me, is to develop your effective uh, professional and interpersonal uh, communication skills. So communication is a key part of this whole, um, the whole program. Uh, understand the value of a growth mindset and how you will use it to, uh, your growth mindset to achieve your personal and professional goals. Gain clarity around the values that drive you and master how to be your um, authenticity, uh, the authentic you in a professional setting develop coaching skills to help you get the best out of teams you lead. So essentially, again, communication, uh, these skills that we talk about from transitioning to work. So um, again, focusing and allowing this program to be for those who haven't been given the opportunity necessarily in their environment, in their home environment, in their professional environment, in their, in their, in their schooling environment, just to give them the, the boost that they need or the confidence to be able to jump in there and, and, look, and basically lead others. Um, and I think one of the big, big outputs for this program is that we want people to be able to, that the program is free for students, but we want the students to be able to use these skills to give back, essentially. And if that means giving back in their work life, absolutely, in their home life, absolutely. And also in those community areas. So giving back to the community, I think is one of the biggest uh, driving forces for this program. Um, the other parts of the program is that because we're, we're targeting all postgraduate students at the University of Melbourne, it allows people to get out of their comfort zones. Now, traditionally at university, we tend to stick within our own cohorts, the cohorts being P 
people enrolled in the same uh, units, people who are the same degrees, people um, that you know usually play in the same team sports or part of the same grad group. Um, here, it allows people to sort of uh, mix in between different uh, cohorts, which they probably wouldn't do normally, only because of habit or convenience uh, and not because of much else. So for us, it's about bringing all these students together to be able to bounce ideas and their, their differences between them uh, to get a bigger picture. So also, um, we, part of the course, you'll be able to learn how to communicate. So I talked about the other, negotiate professionally and how to deal with difficult conversations, both in the workplace and beyond. And last week um, uh, and the week before, Rush and I just, uh, were talking about communication skills and some of those dealing with conflict. So a lot of that stuff will come through uh, in, this, in this program. Uh, you'll understand how to develop a vision and strategy, successfully see a project through to completion, so project management. Learn how to manage change effectively. Now change is a, it's definitely a buzzword at the moment. I think we're all dealing with change at the extreme, but this is how dealing with change with groups of people that, um, that you're involved with. Uh, understanding how to use all these skills in a socially responsible manner. I touched that on briefly. For us, it's about giving back to the community. And because it is a, um, a program that's paid by, for the university, we want to make sure that we're using these funds to be able to supplement your experience at university, but also um, do well in your careers or do well in your community. And that's so important to talk about, Tavita, because, you know, we all attend communication, I think, as a part of every postgraduate program or you know, if you have gone to employment and career, we talk about communication skills, we talk about good project management skills. We all, you know, we have a theory on change management. If you are um, doing an MBA program, you would be doing a whole unit on you know, human resource and change management. If you're doing a course on um, you know, nursing, you'd be probably doing you know, how to effectively manage patients through transition and change. So there, there's a lot of subjects that's there. What we're going to talk about in LEAD and, you know, the webinars that we run is how does that actually practically work for me at a workplace? Let's give an example of a graduate who's learned all these skills. You apply for a graduate program and it's your first kind of three months at a workplace. Now, you have been taught, I want to be assertive, I want to be, you know, ask many questions as much as you can, uh, you know, develop great grand charts to talk about project management. These are all great skills, which are fantastic. You have it, you've brought it, you've been successful. What we're going to teach you is actually, how do you then negotiate your skills into a work environment? where the culture will, will be completely different, your colleagues are different, and how do you have a cohesive um, relationship with them to gain the respect to exercise your authority? Because you can't kind of go to a place and say, well, I'm assertive, so I'm just going to say no to when anything that, you know, I'm sorry, I can't do this, I'm very busy, sorry. Or you may say, I, I don't really like this um, particular program and I'm going to change it. Now, often some places it clicks, some places you just become very unpopular from the word go and life becomes quite miserable. It's having that emotional intelligence of, I have these skills, how am I going to embed my skills being receptive to the people who are around me, receptive to culture, language, diversity, workplace setting, and be able to demonstrate that. So it's really going to be practical conversations rather than a theory conversations. So um, Davita, tell us a little bit about um, your, you know, what does the program look like? And I understand we are um, going to explain to people how the program kind of is works. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, so moving on, the format of the, the program is that it's, obviously a group style of learning. So we're looking for um, a, a big group of, of postgraduate students to be able to interact with that. That's the best way that we feel is, is the way to get the most out of this program is that there's a, a lot of postgraduates from diverse groups. Now, these sessions that are workshops and seminars will be facilitated by professionals. So we are teaming, teaming up with some industry professionals to come in and talk to us about what, what is leadership, the skills that they need, so communication, negotiating with, with conflict, there's going to be role plays. And I think this is part of the, 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 the subject we talked on earlier, is that when during the last um, 
our last intake, we had such a diverse group of students that it was interesting to see them interact at the start and then seeing how they interacted towards the end of the, the, uh, the program. And it's just the transformation was incredible. And it was because we had uh, professionals facilitating those sessions and supporting the students. Now the format, it will go for three months. So essentially now applications are looking to open uh, mid-July, uh, mid, sorry, mid-June to mid-July. Um, for an intake for mid-August. So we will put the dates up soon, but the program itself will run for approximately three months um, and it will be a series of workshops and seminars. So we'll put the dates up uh, when we have applications up and you'll be able to see you know, how your time commitment works with those times and days. Um, but essentially it is um, an intense uh, three-month uh, period where we get you through and, and interacting with so many different students. Now, the other details are eligibility. So all you need to be is a currently enrolled postgraduate student. Now, um, that does not include people that are on leave of absence. You need to be enrolled uh, at the university and an active student to be part of the program. That's our funding requirement. Costs, it is zero cost to a postgraduate student that's, um, that takes part, but it does, I mean, the value of a, of a student doing this program is about fifteen hundred dollars per student. So it's a um, it's not a it's it's a large investment from the university and GSA to be doing this. No cost investment to you, but there is time investment from you. Timing, I, I sort of mentioned this before, is that it is a three month um, uh, course or program. We look to start mid August, um, and applications will open. Uh, mid-June and close mid-July. So there's a good month there to put your application in. Um, and the application process will be via our website. There'll be an online form you need to fill out. Um, and it will be targeting those, I said uh, mentioned earlier, those who don't have a lot of leadership experience or not in a leadership role. Um, the program is absolutely designed to give someone a leg up or an, um, uh, support to get into that position that they would like to get to. Um, for some, so for some of our postgraduate students, they've already been doing it for a few years. And I think this program is targeted at those who still need support in getting there. So that is uh, basically just be a postgraduate student at the University of Melbourne that is enrolled and active, no cost to student. It is, um, the course is about $1,500 um, per student to run. Timing, it is a three month uh, process um, program and uh, we hope to start in mid-August and the information will be up on our website soon, especially through our Facebook channels. You'll see all the uh, links coming through there. Application process, it will be an online form format. So yeah, there are the details for the project. And where to go? So um, we have a web, a web page for this, it's on our website. If you go to the work skills area of our website, you'll see um, where to go to for lead and I'll, I'll ask Andrew in the background just to throw the links up in the chat if you need to contact us lead at gsa.unimail.edu.au is the best email uh, to send it to anything regarding the program please send it to that or you, know, you can call us I mean we have our 1800 GSA help number so that's there for you to call um, anytime Monday to Friday 9 till 5 so Jelly, that's the program we're really looking forward to it um, it's such, a, it's such a great feeling to, to be working with students through this program every year. Um, and yeah, it, it, it's, it's um, gearing up to be a good one. Yeah, thank you so much, Davita. I think it's just, I wanted to emphasize to people that, you know, why, I mean, there's always a thing of why should I be, an, you know, why am I talking about a enrolled student? Because I think a lot of the work that is, it's actually a practical kind of way that we deal with it. It is some of the work would be about your leadership and your style of managing your communication in a class or in a group assignment setting or in your workplace. So, you know, it needs that ability to have that time, a multifaceted lifestyle where you are studying, you're working, or you have, you know, other commitments. So if you, because if you, have, if you are taking a leave of absence, obviously you're taking it for reasons that you need the time to focus on what you need to. And that's absolutely all right. But I think this is really for people who can devote the time, the time to actually do some reflective thinking, the ability to actually take the time to uh, come and chat to us about your, um, you know, your own 
kind of personality and how you want to take your leadership forward about how you deal with people who may have a particular personality. So it's, it's really, as the word calls it, it's an exploration. It is not really a prescriptive way of saying, this is what a leader should do. And, you know, these are the 10 points, tick the button and you'll be fine. I, I think these kind of programs, which have been very popular, you know, Dare to Lead and Lead and other programs that are very, very popular now in all over in a global context, are really the acceptance of we're different. We have to, however, in a globalized economy, deal with a range of people. And as a result of which you, it is important for all of us to understand each other and be able to provide each other that space to respect, understand one another. So we may actually pause for a couple of minutes here and um, particularly to the attendees, Please just feel if this is your opportunity to ask us any questions, just type away a chat question to us. We're more than happy to answer your questions. And even following the program, pick up the phone on 1-800 number and, you know, call us at any time. Because I think for you to commit to such a program, you need to understand what your commitment is. And second thing I also wanted to say to you is that the the application is about us to know you. There is no right and wrong answer. It's not about, you know, you said the right answer, so you're getting in. It's about actually understanding. There's a mutual understanding of each other who get into the program so that we can offer you what is best for you. So Tavita, once again, probably uh, if you can just um, go through the, there is the, it's, they can get onto the website. Is that right? To get more information about LEAD? Yeah, absolutely. So, and, and in, Anna just put that in the chat now is that the link to the website is there. So there's some more details on those pages. Um, there is the email address, lead at GSA and the one at hundred to get more information if you want to speak or just write something to us. Um, but we are planning to have our uh, application process open uh, mid-June, as I said, so in the coming weeks. And you'll see more on our social media channels. Uh, we'll, we'll describe um, the process coming up. Fantastic. So you can, all of you who are listening can understand why this is such an important strategy for us as a part of our transition to work objective from the strategic plan. It's, an ob, it's, a, it's absolutely trying to explore your skills, your knowledge, and your experience within you and as well as in the setting to prepare you for work in the outside industry setting. So, I mean, as we have around nearly, I think we've just got about 30,000 now students who are enrolled in the postgraduate program placed all around the world that is there. Um, can you, um, somebody has asked us is that, you know, let's talk, uh, fantastic questions coming up. Uh, one is the question is what kind of activities, type of activities in uh, on the time of commitment, kindly go through the type of activities involved in LEAD. So Tavita, do you want to briefly talk a little bit about the different kind of activities that you would have and then we can move on to the next question. Sure, thanks for the question. So the types of activities and, and the, the time commitment. What do we mean by time commitment? We want, because of the, the program is free to students, um, the, the time can we ask for is that you commit to all the sessions we're going to put forward. So these look like um, workshops or seminars uh, that happen uh, in the week. And it's usually one a week or one every fortnight. Um, and we're just nailing down the detail now. But we want to make sure that when people sign up, they're signing up for all of it. And we'll have the details of all the, the dates and times through the application process so that you will know that if actually, no, I'm actually away or and this is going to be in the middle of my submission. I prefer not to, to be doing two things at once. Um, so it, it'll be your decision. But for us, the time commitment for us is just making sure that people understand that there's a lot of time, effort, and money being put into the program, and we just want students to know that and commit to it. Um, so briefly talking about the activities is that they are workshops. Some of them would be really an exploration with individuals about their personality and style to kind of get an understanding of what type of personality you are and how to kind of develop your leadership skills in that area. A lot of good listening, a lot of listening to other people's experience about how they handle situation. 
sometimes it is more about uh, running activities in groups to understand how you develop your leadership skills in a group setting. So it could be, you know, we might give you a puzzle or we would give you a project to deal with and see how you develop your strategy as a leader. You know, are you the person who follows the instructions? How do you contribute to your leadership? How do you address conflict in a group setting? And really the other activities are also the ability to develop your personality, some amount of socialization, some amount of we're hoping by the end of the program, some physical kind of setting that we can have activities and games that allow us to do that. So uh, moving on to the next question is that, would this program be appropriate for someone who has started on their leadership journey? For example, being the secretary of a grad group, would that be too much leadership experience for this program? So uh, I guess, you know, we are going to play it by year, depending on the um, applications that we receive. Definitely the people on the higher priority is people who have never had an opportunity to be on, on a grad group leader or, you know, have not had uh, opportunity in certain cultural settings, certain um, countries of origin or certain family settings. You know, you've always had to be listening, a person who has listened to everything what others have said. So we want to kind of explore that. But I think for the people who are in these positions, we are also going to do something exciting. All the programs that we are going to offer in LEAD will be also segmented out as a part of our leadership program that we'll continue to run as a complementary kind of program for people who have who are not within the LEAD program. So if we had a program which is focused on leadership style and there's this webinar that is developed or a workshop that is developed as a part of the LEAD program, this year we're endeavoring to deliver that as an individual module so that people who are already who are leaders and it's also for council members who are joining as leaders and our staff who are taking up leadership that this will be opened out to other leadership programs, the grad representatives, you know, um, our grad group leaders to also be able to be a part of that module. So I think our aim is to ensure that it's not excluding people, it's to be inclusive, but also to ensure that people who often don't get to participate in such programs are encouraged to participate in the programs. So, um, um, which will participants receive a sort of a certificate once the program is finished? Yes, the aim is to validate uh, people. Um, I, I don't, I do want to say it will not be uh, an accredited certificate. It would be a participation and completion of the program certificate. We do validate your experience. We do provide you uh, some documentation to say that you know you have participated in the program and um, I, I just want to emphasize the program when we talk about certificates and appreciation we really are not the program is not about giving you an answer it is an a program to explore the answer and I think that is the most exciting part of LEAD that it's not about actually talking about hey this is the way you should do it it's more about Tell me what you're comfortable with. And I have found good leaders are people who explore their own style of good being a good leader, you know, a compassionate one, a person who actually has respect for diversity, a person who learns to appreciate and empathize with others, a person who has forgiveness, a person who has gratitude, a person who actually can lend an ear to other people when in difficult situations. So it's really about exploring yourself. So we will move on. We have the next presenter here today with us, Vibol. Thank you so much for joining. And, uh, you know, GSA has always kind of explored and thought is having a volunteer program is extremely helpful for people to kind of have a workplace setting to ensure that you actually spending some time with people in a work setting, working alongside with them, contributing to your community, but also exploring and understanding the dynamics of a workplace. 
So this year we were very, very fortunate to have Vibol on board. Thank you so much, Vibol. And over to you to tell us a little bit about the volunteer program. Yeah, good morning, Rachna, and good morning, graduate students. Just checking you guys can hear me? Yeah, I think right, nice and clear and loud. Oh, great, fantastic. Um, yeah, so um, I'm here to talk about the GSA volunteer program for 2020. It's going to be a 10 week, uh, a 10 week program um, starting from the 31st of August to the Friday, the 13th of November. So applications will open for this 10 week program on the 15th of June and will end on the 15th of July. And all the applications will be um, set on the GSA website. Um, I would love to talk to more, more about the details. Um, could we go to the why volunteer slide? So um, I think the importance of the volunteer program is just for the listeners, the graduates is that the program is a 10 week program. So that's important because it also allows you to contribute to the community. We've also designed it that the contribution is awarded, rewarded and validated. For us, yeah. the important is, is, is about that. So thank you, Vibol. Tell us a little bit about why volunteer at GSA. Yeah, so GSA, as we know, is, you know, we're a quite a big organization at the University of Melbourne. We have various activities and huge events, well, events going forward. We'll, be, we'll absolutely have to look a little bit different, but we're a huge student hub. And what we really realize that there is a lot of talent and a lot of potential within the graduate, in the graduate community. And why we wanted to have a volunteer program is that we, we want to see our graduates um, be as job ready and have all these soft skills and networking skills that, you know, I got when I volunteered um, quite heavily during my uni days. And, um, you know, I've met incredible people, learned incredible skills, learned how to effectively um, communicate during a workplace. And for me, those were some really incredible things and why I chose to volunteer um, during my graduate um, studies. Um, so going to the next slide, I'll, more of the detailed and outcomes of the program is what um, our volunteers will be helping us do, be helping form policy. We will also be learning how to communicate how the, how a professional organization, especially in um, this day and age, how we effectively communicate um, to our, um, our graduate students online, offline, and what those strategies are. And of course, contribute to more effective communication strategies. We're also going to try to teach our volunteers basically how to pitch, plan and implement a project. Again, which is um, what Tavita was mentioning before, really there's a, a huge focus within um, project management, which is a, a huge skill set and very employable to, to the industries going forward. But also learning, you know, some more of the bread, bread and butter of GSA, which is how we campaign and how we advocate within the university and within the higher, se higher education sector as well to make sure that graduate students uh, and their concerns are being listened to and they're being advocated for. That's as such well, an important thing to be bold, but I mean, I love the words that we're talking about. It's really your placement as a volunteer will actually take into account our values that, you know, you're as a volunteer, you're empowered to kind of participate with us to form policies, to be consulting, working with Natasha, Vipal, and Jonathan, and Ali in the representation team to actually understand how do you get a, how does, what are the different policies that we should be advocating for? Learning to actually understand how they think of the policy, how they consult. You will be a part of doing that, like, you know, on a hands-on kind of work, apart from attending workshops. I think it's the exciting part, what I've heard from Vibol is you're actually going to be uh, even participating in project management through the student engagement team. Is that right, Vibol? Yes, absolutely. Um, they got, our volunteers are going to come up with a template 
on how projects should be thought out at um, the, the start of the project to the end and what that sort of project management um, would look like, you know, what are the risks for um, a future project? What are the opportunities? What are the potential? Can the, is this a sustainable model? Um, you know, if we all leave the, about, um, the organization tomorrow, could, could, it, could this project that you plan, would it be able to work without, um, you know, you there? So being able to create sustainable and, you know, engaging projects is really, it's, it's a really exciting, you know, um, activity to do as a, as a graduate student. And I think would be very employable and, you know, you would learn a lot more about the university itself in, in this process as well. Fantastic. And um, can I just ask you, Vibol, in relation to um, the 10-week program that is there, would it be, do you pick a field or do you actually get an opportunity to overall guide you through this, um, through the whole, is it like a full 360 degree kind of exposure to the organization? Yeah, it would be, um, uh, it would be working within each team within, so the communications team, the representation team, the engagement team, um, you would be working one day or volunteering one day a week. And with the, of, of course, the option, um, depending on what social distancing would be to come in and just have a chat with us throughout the week and see how you're going, as well as a way that we can tie this program to a project would be that you'll be actually working on either to, to in a team of volunteers or by yourself, a major project that you're going to present to GSA and our staff members. And, you know, if we like the project enough, maybe, you know, this is something that we can um, run in the future as well, because we love working with our students and our graduate students. And, you know, some of the best ideas can come from graduate students. And that's what we're looking for as well. Fantastic. And there's a lot of opportunity during the program to offer you a workplace experience. So, you know, being able to provide you um, an ability to participate in professional development, being able to be supervised by Vibol and this relevant staff. So I think it's just not, okay, come here and, you know, uh, photocopy a few documents or staple the documents. I mean, these are all important tasks for us at a workplace, but unfortunately at the moment, we're all doing that in our respective homes. Mm -hmm. But um, I think it's about really contributing to an inclusive workplace, which is really I'm a graduate, what is it would it be for me to work in an advocacy agency? And um, if that's what I want to pursue, if I'm a doctor and I'm going to be working in a uh, hospital, how will I work in a setting to bring policy changes or to influence policy change? If I'm a civil, um, you know, I'm doing civil construction, how do I kind of pitch my idea through a good project, ma project management strategy that I've learned through my volunteering. So Vibol, can you tell me a little bit about the application process again, please? Yeah, so the, the key dates that we will have is the applications will open around the 15th of June and they will be all done through the GSA website. Um, and so once that goes, so once we go through the selection process, we'll start doing some group interviews and we'll start the program on the 31st of August on a Monday. And we'll, we just have to um, keep, um, so we just have to, we'll update you through the GSA communication channels and like the lead program as well. We really are looking for people that really need that work experience to get them their first job or get them to where they need to be after they graduate, after they finish their graduate studies at the University of Melbourne. Um, again, this would, uh, this would only be applicable to graduate students at the University of Melbourne. Um, but we're, I'm just we're very, very excited to, to run this program. And we also have a, a hybrid version as well. If, you know, social distancing laws um, don't loosen up, so we will be able to run an online volunteering program as well. Hopefully we won't have to, and hopefully things, you know, get better. Um, and we'll be able to run a really exciting program where we, where we focus a lot on 
some really exciting opportunities that a lot of graduate students won't won't have during their studies or you know would have had to fight tooth and nail at some corporate um uh office to try to get a, a, an opportunity i think it's an incredible experience exactly and and i probably want not to draw expectations we are not talking about many many volunteers we are hoping that we would have four to four volunteers initially and following that intake if the program is evaluated we bring in another four and the rotation continues so we're not talking about 10 volunteers or 20 volunteers we want to start small we want to ensure that we focus and provide those volunteers the time uh there is a small stipend of $500 that would be provided during your 10 week tenure it's not a bit of big of money but it's a money that's allocated for this program as a part of the unibank support and the university of belgium's funding and the funding is basically it's a small amount of money it's a volunteer program so it's actually to cover your incidental costs that are there uh we are also will be uh, providing a certificate of completion once you um go through the program it's not a program uh where you can start stop you know i can't come for this week and i do it in four other weeks it requires unless if it's of medical or personal reasons that you can't catch up because you really need to be available during the 10 weeks to attend the group activity because um they are actually also our staff timing so there's things like you know a day spending with me as a ceo there is a time spent with the general manager with the teams so i just encourage people who are listening to the program look forward to the advertisements that will be advertised in the next couple of weeks we will be giving you plenty of time to apply again an online process there's no right and wrong it's about actually saying that you have the time and the commitment and your value based in exploring uh, your skills at a workplace so thank you so much bibol and we look forward to having you um giving us more information as we move on but before i kind of finish i also wanted to talk to people who are on the volunt uh, who are listening to us is gsa has committed a large amount of resources into transition to work so this year in 2020 with the support of the council members and the budget uh, allocation we have actually recruited five graduate positions into the organization so in fact uh, by reducing the funding that we are spending on consultants we have reinvested them in having five of our staff members who are currently with working in the representation team communication team in the business operation team graduate representation team and the communication team the five areas to actually working 2 to 3 days supporting us in the work so they are employees they are uh, they have a 12 month contract with us or 10 to 12 month contract even during the covid 19 we've been very very fortunate to have them to continue working with us and they are people who have a work plan they have a supervisor they have responsibility for delivering their projects um and apart from that is they gained experience as employees provide a sound footing for them to actually be eligible for the jobs that they would be looking forward into in the industry and if we have the ongoing funding commitment um you know there are certain because of the the decrease in the enrollments if gsa is impacted by some funding cuts of course we may need to modify the program but we want to embed the graduate employee experience for all graduates which will be advertised again for the next group of our graduates around the end of november to have an intake for you all to commence your program um early in february february or late january so it's been a fantastic program we have um five graduates who are working with us and we find their contribution their um ability to kind of support us in capacity green just incredibly valuable for the organization 
And I think having a lived experience as a student just has allowed us to advocate very efficiently and effectively as a part of the organization. So thank you so much, Tavita and Vibol. And I may at this point ask if there are any questions from our attendees. I thank you so much for taking the time to attend the session. And also we look forward to your support in promoting these Grad Chat webinars to your friends and colleagues, because I think uh, we want to make these webinars as accessible and reach out to more graduates in our community so that they can apply for any of these positions. So I am happy to take any questions. And if, as we do that, Tavita, would you like to come and tell us what's happening exciting this week in our webinar space at GSA? Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Rashley. So um, like every, so who, who are not familiar with our process and welcome to everyone new and returning on, on the call, um, every, Monday to Thursday we run webinars um, and it's 10 to 11. And so for us, we try, we, we, we gear our webinars towards our strategic uh, goals. And so transition to work, academic excellence, representation, um, and also uh, organizational stability and engaged and healthy community. So um, not different to any other week. It is our last week of a, of a full program being week 12. A lot of our stuff is concentrated around supporting students um, at the crunch time of the semester. So today, obviously, we talked about leadership and the opportunities that GSA can provide to our students through leadership. Um, to, uh, also later today, we're releasing a plus playlist, uh, a study playlist. So Andrew's designed a few hours of uh, good, relaxing study music, so nothing too heavy. Um, tomorrow, Rush and I will go through stress management um, and with some particular focus on exams. So that's a, a really good session. We had some really good feedback on our last uh, sessions on communication. So tomorrow is stress management, 10 o'clock. Uh, also tomorrow at 2 p.m. we're running a meditation practice. So in conjunction with uh, counseling and psychological services at the University of Melbourne, we're gonna be uh, broadcasting a few techniques to, for, for breathing and um, compassion um, meditation. So I think it's quite uh, appropriate for the time of year and what we're going through. So please look out for that. Social media, Facebook is where we put all the links and the registrations there. So please go onto our page. Wednesday Rush will be talking with Amsu and some more supporting students um, uh, you know, the, the, uh, through this through this current situation, and so some more details to follow. But registrations will be on our Facebook page. Uh, also on Wednesday, uh, as we do normally, support our our graduate students who are carers or parents. We have a kids challenge last one for the semester where we we put the challenge out for for carers and parents to run with their their loved ones over the weekend as, as a bit of interaction and engagement. Uh, Wednesday we have a drop-in dance session. Now last week we had a few uh, interesting uh, versions of dance pop through on the, the session so that was quite fun and it's a good way to let your hair down so that's Wednesday Thursday I'll be um, on the the webinar at 10 a.m. with academic skills talking about uh, pre pre preparation for exams and some tips and guidance in, in getting through exam period so that's a, a workshop they will be having on 10 a.m. on Thursday um, we'll also be releasing another uh, a quick and easy and healthy recipe that day as well as in the afternoon, 1.30, we have the Convo Club. So this is a, a discussion group that gets together to discuss a, a popular movie or TV series. And um, this week, it is the Hunger Game. So um, if you have the time, 1.30, jump on the call. There'll be some great deep conversation around that um, that series of movies, I guess. Um, and Friday, uh, we are sending out our kids, kids playlists that we help for our, our um, student parents or carers. And lastly, to end the week, we actually have a Feel Good Friday session with a, a DJ um, who will be putting out some tunes through our Facebook page. Um, and the DJ is also um, quite famous. I think if you go to the Facebook page, you'll see um, he normally plays at the Falls, Falls Festival and such like that. So it'd be nice to sort of ring in the weekend, the last day of semester, um, and uh, hopefully prepare everyone for uh, some, some, some study and some assessment-driven um, work at home the next following weeks. But for, further to that, um, GSA is committed to supporting our graduate students over SWAT back in exams, and we're releasing out a new version of our coffee support. So every uh, SWAT back exa uh, exam time, we normally have coffee available on campus. Slightly different this year, as everyone knows, um, we will be partnering up with uh, cafes around uh, uh, inner city and just uh, on, the, on, the, on the cusp of inner city to, to provide free coffee for postgraduates through a registration system and that'll be released this week 
for the coming weeks of SWOT mate exam. So look out for that and also concentrating on mindfulness techniques uh, during this process. So thanks, Thank Roshna. That's fantastic, Tavita. My God, a whole lot of lists. So please ensure that you'll do uh, attend the website. So there we, we have a couple of questions. So does this contribute, does this program contribute to the Leica Award? As GSA, we always promote all our participants to any relevant awards in the university. So the answer is yes. However, it is not a guaranteed thing that, you know, you would, um, you would be awarded the Leica Award. So I just wanted to make that clear. And second thing is, um, um, the question is that, can we apply for all the opportunities? Yes, you can. We don't discriminate against anyone and we don't say, you know, you can and can't, but remember that um, it's probably not going to be realistic to participate in being in all the programs. So there will be an order of priority and how we assess the application. So uh, thank you to the attendees, but I do want to plug in again that um, on Friday at 1.30, we have our annual general meeting. And, um, you know, it is a wonderful time to kind of listen to the, the, the achievements of the organization through the council members. Um, often we forget that, you know, they do spend long hours, they provide uh, strategic advice, and they've done a brilliant piece of actually ensuring there is a new proposed constitution that's put forward to increase participation of graduates in the life of the organization. So I encourage you to please uh, register and attend the session. It's a short session from 1.30 to 2.30, and it may even take less than an hour, but it's a good time to kind of listen to the achievements and be supportive of the constitutional reform. So it's um, exactly on the dot of 11. Thank you so much. We close the session for Monday and we look forward for you to join us tomorrow at 10 o'clock. Bye-bye for now.